Hey patrons, you know it's Queen All Set Haru. Now, somebody asked me to talk about herbs, different kinds of herbs. Every spell we do, every potion we make, as you know, priestesses, as witches, as shaman, whatever your you know term is, every one we use, we use oils, we use herbs, uh, we use crystals sometimes, depending on the situation. So people ask me, how do you know herbs? How do you learn herbs? Now, first of all, you can learn the herbs that you can use in magic from just getting a book. You guys know that I often have this book here. Let me slide it out from underneath all the other books. This book right here is called the Hoodoo Herb and Root Magic Book. Now, this book here has traditional uh, formulary giving the spiritual uses of natural herbs, roots, minerals, and zoological curios. So this book that you can't see because it's backwards, you know I have this all the time. Now, you could just get a book like that. You know, they have that one and I've seen bigger ones. I saw one that was like this big, you know, and they had like every herb and every root <laughs> listed in it throughout time. So you could just get a book and simply read it. And especially a book like this one, because it's geared towards magic. And then you can just read it like I did and mark off, you know, highlight the, the herbs and what they're for. So the other day I was reading about apples apples are commonly used in love magic you know so stuff like that is in a book like that so now you know if you're doing a, a love magic spell you might in some kind of way want to incorporate apples and there are lots of ways you can do that so another way for you to learn about herbs i found recently this was not out when i first started this is very beneficial this is called the herb crafters tarot the Herb Crafters Tarot, artwork by Joanna Powell Colbert, written by Letitia Guthrie. Um, it's a deck and a box set by U.S. Games. The reason why I recommend this, and I'll show you, is because it's not just a regular tarot deck. Now, you guys know you can use tarot for divination. Most people use it for divination. But that's not the only reason to use tarot. You can use tarot for self-reflection. You can use tarot if you want to write stories. Some people shuffle the cards and just pull a card and write a story based on what they say in the card. You can use it for journal prompts, all kinds of things like that. Not just divination, which is the most common way. So this deck is, of course, I can shuffle this deck and I can do a, a full reading with this deck. But I also can use this deck to learn the herbs because... You won't be able to see the words, but let me show you the picture. This right here, this is the peach, the peach tree. Now, you can't see it because it's upside down, but it tells you at the bottom it's a peach tree and it's the nine of water. So if you pull this card, the nine of water is the nine of cups. So that tells you if you know Tarot, you know what the nine of cups means. It means content, happy, you know, your cup runneth over. But peach tree. So the peach tree is right here in the background. And if you go to the guidebook, you can look it up in here. And it tells you right here, bam, all about peaches. And according to this, it says here that celebrate the pleasures of life. Delicate blossoms ripen into into succulent fruit enjoy your own sweet company so this particular card as you get further to the bottom they explain to you how to use peaches literally and for this card it says here that you can you eat them of course eat peach fruit you also can make a sacred bath of peach blossoms sensual oils and perfumes Craft a peach flower essence to celebrate your majesty. So the thing about it is, is that you might not know much about this or you might want to do more research, but you at least know <clears throat> if you're doing a spell about pleasure, 
trying to enjoy life more, uh, comfort your senses, you can incorporate peaches the same way we talked about apples. Okay. There's another one I had picked out for today too, because I used this today actually, and I thought this was really cool. If you go to the major arcana, the major arcana, um, the first, you know, uh, what is it? 22 cards in the deck. I thought it was really cool that for justice, number 11 is cannabis, right? So I was like, that is so decent. So the justice card, because they were talking about the legalization. So that's the justice card. But when you take a look at it, it tells you here to use hemp fabrics. Consider using cannabis for healing. Do research. Talk to experts. Make an informed choice. So as you can see, all of this that we have here is telling you in the card what the herb is. And then in the book, it tells you what it's for and how to use it. So if you wanted to use something, now magically speaking, you could, you know, you can use CBD oils, a number of different ways to use um, cannabis. And it says here using hemp. It says here that there's oil, there's tinctures, there's vitamins, there's all kinds of things you can use. And some of these are even legal in all the states. <laughs> and some of them are legal only in certain states. But the point of the matter is, is that you can use this to learn. And they have uh, 78 different herbs in here. Here's another one, oregano, for example. And it says here you can use oregano and vaginal steams. It improves the circulation and energy flow in the pelvis and the womb. You can also, it says here, you can use it to cook, which a lot of our, a lot of us do use oregano to cook. So if you wanted to use oregano, according to this, it's supposed to be something that's really good for women. So if I was going to do, let's say, for example, I was going to do a spell for somebody who wanted to get pregnant, something to help their womb to be fertile and to create. Oregano is probably one of the herbs I would use on the candle because it says here it's helpful for the womb, the pelvis and the womb. So those are two areas you would want to work with if you're trying to get the person to be able, or not, well, I'm so sorry, I'm, I was getting ready to say trying to get them to conceive, which you're not doing. You're helping the person's womb prepare to conceive. Got to be careful how you word things, man. Somebody be like, what? You helping me get pregnant? What? <laughs> so... This particular deck, I have come to find, is very good for that. So there's 78 different herbs in this deck. So if you took this deck and pulled one card every day, theoretically speaking, and not using any repeats, after 78 days, you would have learned 78 different herbs that you can use in your magic. And you'll know how to use it and what capacity, you know, oil, putting it in your, you know, how, how you can put it in your potion, whatever the case is. And if you're not certain, because they tell you which ones are edible and which ones are not. And if you're not certain, you can do further research. But the point is, is that you now have a door, an opening, and you're like, oh, when I do my love candle, I can use apple shavings, for example. Or if I got to do prosperity, I can use, what is that? Basil. That's the one I was thinking of. So it's different ones. And all of the main ones that we use in magic are in this deck. Okay, guys? So you check that out and come back soon because I got so much more to say. See you later.